Module 2.11 Formatting Tables in Acrobat Managing Tag Elements for Tables Properly formatting tables deals heavily with tag structure and adjusting the table properties. We will walk through what a properly formatted table will look like, tagging table elements and further procedures for complex table designs. Confirming the tag structure. Properly tagged tables will have a main tag that expands into tags assigned for each row of the table, under each of which all data cells can be found by their row. The names and descriptions of the table tags are as follows. Table, which is the parent tag that superimposes all table tags. Table row or TR, which holds all tagged table cells for a certain row of the table. Table header or TH, used to designate header cells usually found in the first row and column. Table data or TD, for tagging data cells. Converting layout tables to text. A table will sometimes be used as a layout feature to organize information in the document. In these cases, the table borders must be set as artifacts. Also, table data cells should be tagged as paragraph elements and removed from the table tag tree. To do this, 1. Locate the table in the viewing window. Open the tags menu in the reading order window. Use the crosshair selection tool to highlight the first element of the table's intended reading order. 2. Navigate to the Tags Options menu and select Find Tag from Selection. The selected content will automatically be expanded and highlighted within the tag tree. The content should be found within a table tag. Reselect the content with the crosshair cursor and select Text slash Paragraph. 3. A new paragraph tag, labeled P, now holding the content should appear with an expandable caret symbol in the same area of the table tag tree. The table header or data cell that contained the element will now be empty. Repeat this process for each table in the intended read order. Confirm the intended reading order is reflected by the new paragraph tags in the tag tree. 5. Now that all table tags are empty, Delete the empty tags. Tagging table elements. If an actual table that is relevant to understanding the data it contains is instead tagged as paragraph content, table tags can be efficiently arranged with the reading order window. To tag table elements, 1. Open the reading order window from the tags options menu. 2. Within the document viewing window, Use the crosshair selection tool to create a box around all elements of the table. Select Table in the reading order window. 3. A section tag labeled Sect will appear in the tag tree, superimposing a table tag. Move the table tag outside of the section tag and delete the section tag. 4. Expand the table tag to view the structure and content in the table. Acrobat will most likely have assigned table row tags, each with table header and table data tags, to the table and content. 5. Expand each table row and then each table tag to verify content was properly distributed and tagged properly. In some cases, multiple headers may have been grouped into a single table header tag, or vice versa. Reference the proper table tag structure to arrange any tags or content. To fast track this process, if a tag needs to be changed, it can be directly renamed as TR for table row, TH for table header, or TD for table data, all in the tag tree. Formatting complex tables. Distinguishing column and row table headers. When screen readers are interpreting a table with both row and column headers, it is important that they can distinguish between the two. This is called the scope of a table header, which is recommended to be set for all tables regardless if it contains only row headers. To set the scope of table headers, 1. Open the reading order window in the Tags Options menu and ensure Show Page Content Groups 
is enabled with structure types. 2. Select any table header or table data content block in the viewing window. 3. In the reading order menu, press Table Editor. The table will now be overlaid with color-coded boxes that differentiate table headers from table data cells. 4. Right-click the first table header and select Table Cell Properties. In the Table Cell Properties window, open the Scope drop-down menu and select Column or Row to designate the header type. Press OK. Repeat this process for all table headers. Formatting merged table cells. It is important that tags accurately reflect table elements made of multiple merged cells. Tagged content will need to be grouped into one tag, if multiple tags exist that represent the cells. Once this is done, numbers of cells high and cells wide can be specified by adjusting the span for the table cell. To set the column and row span for a table cell, 1. Open the reading order window in the Tags menu and, with Show Page Content Groups enabled, select any table cell, then select Table Editor. 2. With a superimposed table editor grid, right-click the single cell made up of merged table cells. Open the Table Cell Properties window. 3. In the Attributes section, change the row span to equal the number of cells that make up the height of the merged cell. Enter in Column Span, the number of cells that make up the merged cell width. Press OK to finalize the settings. If a warning message concerning the column span appears, select OK. Complete this process for all merged cells, which will no longer conflict with the table's accessibility. Assigning table header IDs. Tables with special formatting or merged cells may have disparities between the data cells and the headers that reflect them. Headers are recommended to be tied to their data cells through header IDs. To name and associate header IDs, 1. Open the reading order window in the Tags menu and, with Show Page Content Groups enabled, select Any Table Cell, then select Table Editor. 2. Right-click the table header to be associated with table data cells and open the Table Cell Properties window. 3. In the ID text field under Attributes, replace the serial header ID with a simple and recognizable header name. Press OK to save the new header ID. 4. Right-click the first table data cell under the header to reopen table cell properties. Next to the Associated Header Cell IDs list box, press the plus symbol to open a header ID drop-down menu. 5. Select the new header ID from the drop-down menu and press OK. Press OK again in the Table Cell Properties window to finalize these changes. 6. Continue these steps with each table data cell in the row or column of that specific header. Repeat the entire process to associate each header with data cells. Keep in mind that a data cell can be associated with a column and a row header, in which case this can be set by adding both in the Associated Header Cell IDs list. Conclusion In this module, we've explored the basics of identifying and tagging table content. We've also covered some procedures on formatting complex tables with unique header layouts and merged cells. In the next module, we will learn about accessible list formatting in Acrobat.